C'est bon Yes. Uh, so the funny thing is that um, I, I say to the Suzy team that at the end of the, um, of the talk, um, I bring the, the award we got yesterday night for the open source uh, champion. Thanks so much. And all the people from Suzy team who are working closely with us day after day, I just wanted to have a, a, a picture shot. And I said to Kiss, so if you can join us. So I, I guess that you only um, keep in mind that it's for the photo, but it's not only for the photo. We, we have a fireside chat right now. Oh, OK. <laughs> um, <laughs> listen, and I apologize. I've been so stressed about this 20-minute keynote that I have to give tomorrow morning. Uh, for some reason, um, and everything, I have to pull some things together. So, but uh, I've known this guy for a while, um, maybe a couple years now, since uh, two MWCs ago we yeah. met. Yeah, right. Um, and so we've worked together with. Uh, it was four called Egate, now Silva, now uh, some things that we're doing in production with you guys. I was supposed exactly. So, um, how do you want to make it? Do you have the question, or do we make a live, a live whatever? <laughs> <laughs> We oh yeah, let's, no, no. let's look no, at the no, slides no, 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 and see no, what we, we got here. We we do not we do not have slides. We don't have slides. No, this is real time. So, so th okay, the, the right. idea was I I, I just hold need on, hold on. Okay, just give me a second. I'm going to snap into place and this is going to go swimmingly well. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, so um, t first of all, does everybody in the room know what Silva is? Yeah. Yes. We have an analyst. We have some. Wait, 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 wait. So we don't we don't just have an analyst, okay? We have an academic superstar with a PhD in English or some such. Um, please introduce yourself because I want to make sure you understand why we're up here. I appreciate that. Hi. <laughs> My name is Michelle Rosen. I'm the uh, Open Gen AI and Open uh, Source Ecosystem Analyst for IDC. Yes, and she is a great uh, dinner partner. We had a brilliant conversation last night. It was really, truly great. So um, do you want to give an introduction just quickly, since most people know what Silva is? <laughs> why did Silva come together? OK. So um, Project Silva basically has started, um, I would say it's November 2022. So it's, it was in Seattle. And it was um, the, the first start, basically, to to um, jump into the cloud native telco journey. So the background uh, with uh, Silva is the following one, and it should have been the first question. Yes. So the first question, what are the challenges around the, the telco industry? So um, we have many, many challenges in telco industry, but one of the biggest amongst we are trying to uh, move forward with the Silva project is around disaggregation. So uh, if you are in telco space, you need to remember that we have three kind of different eras. We have the world of physical, the PNF, okay? The world of virtual machine world with the VNF. And, and uh, since a uh, few times, we have this cloud native network function, so the CNF. So it's about the disaggregation from once uh, everything fits in a hardware box up to a disaggregated with uh, um, the hardware, the software, and in the middle, we have the orchestration layer. So into this journey, uh, for us, it's extremely important because when you are a, um, a telecom operator like Orange, basically, we are operating in, uh, in, in several dozens of countries and affiliates in Europe and in Africa. So if every time we are setting up an infrastructure, we are relying on something that is super vertical and super proprietary, at the end of the day, we are reduplicate skill centers that have very narrow skills and very very narrow understanding of what they are trying to solve. So that's why, um, from strategic standpoint, what we are pushing with other uh, telecom industry peers is moving from a very highly vertical ecosystem to a truly horizontal one. And into this horizontal motion, basically, we have three different things to tackle. The first one is about the infrastructure. The second one is about the uh, network function, lifecycle management and deployment. And the third one is about the operation of the system. So um, basically, uh, if we start from the beginning at infrastructure level, whether you are um, a, a DT, a Vodafone, a Orange, a Telefonica, or a Telecom Italia, basically at infrastructure level, honestly, we are sharing more than 95% of the requirement uh, to deploy our network function and, and our infrastructure. And instead of poorly and badly do it alone, 
in every telco company, we decided to get united and that's why um, we, we implemented and proposed this Silva project. So the Silva project is a Linux uh, Foundation Europe hosted project that has three goals and three objectives that are for me super important. The first one is a framework where we describe all the requirements that are necessary to run, I would say, uh, the, um, the VNF uh, workloads. Uh, the second one is to have a reference implementation and for us it was absolutely critical because in open source ecosystem and, and uh, no one better than you as Susie can see this without a reference implementation honestly to have a success it's nearly impossible so we have a, a reference implementation and then we have something that uh, is super super important it's the validation center because uh, when you're moving it from this very vertical to this very horizontal ecosystem the fact you validate the solution from editors that, that we need is extremely important. So the background story around Silva is to have a cloud native telco stack industrial grade to cover core, run and edge cases. I love it. I love it. So the last thing you said about the validation is really critical. Um, we have been walking on our journey to uh, be a player in the telco space with cloud native and all things you know cloud native. So one thing that we baked into our own product that we're using across other industries outside of telco is this idea of validation. So we have a service called Stack Validation. And so with the telco thing, we can specify exactly this particular reference architecture with configurations. And you know in the infrastructure game, at each layer of the stack, there will be different life cycles, right? So you have got a Linux life cycle, which is very long, stable. You know, people talk about 10-year life cycle for Linux, but that is the opposite of Kubernetes, which is a new version every three months. So um, we see this challenge in other kind of critical infrastructure um, segments, particularly around healthcare, where if you put a cloud native stack in a x-ray machine, how do you upgrade that? Like, because as soon as you deploy it, you're already guaranteed to be two, two Kubernetes versions behind. And so you have to, what we've done is we followed the best practices from the US government. Uh, the US government has, uh, let me just back up a bit because I want to get back to critical infrastructure for a second. Um, in the US government, for you to deploy a system, you have to get what's called an authority to operate, which means that your system has been vetted for all the security check boxes that are required for a compliance framework. And in the past, we would take a year, like 18 months to two years to validate this system here, the next one here, the next one here, the next, and as soon as you deploy them, all the software that you described is out of date, right? It was a, a hamster wheel that never started growing in size, right? Um, so what, what happened was the, the Air Force got smart, and what they did was, instead of validating each individual system, they validated the build pipeline. And so the pipeline became ATO, so which meant that when you run software through that, it automatically got a certification to be you know, validated to be deployed on, on the high side or the US government thing. So to bring that back to our use case here, we've built a validation framework for the telco business that's built on the Silva uh, specification so that when we run through the latest version of Sleep Micro, the latest version of Kubernetes, the latest version of the applications, that we run, we know that it checks all the boxes and passes the, the silver checkbox and we're good to go. And it's exactly where we started from the very beginning working together because yes. where um, Susie and Rancher team uh, jump in, it was uh, when we need to deep dive about the life cycle management and the upgrade of the service. Yes. And uh, what was extremely interesting is that um, like, I'm, like, like I shared uh, talking about Silva project and the reference implementation, a reference implementation is not a product, okay? So it means that when you are working, for instance, at Orange, what we are deploying in production is something called Orange Telco Cloud. And Orange Telco Cloud is a product. Orange Telco Cloud basically is a sub-part of the upstream Silva project yes. where we only pick the component that we need regarding the hardware footprint and the virtualization footprint and to deploy, uh, to, 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 to manage the different use cases. And since the very beginning for us, we wanted to do it the cloud native way by the cloud native way. So using cluster API yes. to bootstrap the whole infrastructure. And that's where you came in because for instance, we are a uh, heavy user of RK2, but also MetalCube and you deliver all uh, the, the, the cluster API bootstrapper that- Let me, let me pause you. 
Uh, that row back there, thank you guys very much, because that is the team that largely led the Metal Cube integration and Cluster A Power work. So, uh, good job, guys. No, no, please continue. No, 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 no. It's, uh, congrats, because yes. we are using your stuff every day. Congrats. Yes. <laughs> There's meaningful impact to the work that you guys have done, and I want to recognize that. Yes, so. and, and honestly, uh, today what is extremely interesting is that we are able to uh, roll out and release an infrastructure, um, only the declarative mode, uh, we are relying on a full GitOps approach that is spawning the whole infrastructure, whether is it virtual, virtual, virtual bare metal, or bare metal, bare metal, regarding the cases yes. we need to cover. And that, that's what we love about the framework. It's very adaptable and flexible. Um, I was going to say something. Uh, oh, yeah, so Silva has the specification. What we've, I'm going to separate now for a little bit of Susan, we're going to come back. Um, what we did is we looked at that stack and we said, okay, our telco product, the telco cloud product, is called the Adaptive Telco Infrastructure Platform, ATIP for short. That is, in my mind, the first production supported reference uh, implementation of the reference architecture for what the collective inside Silva has defined. And so when we approach other telco opportunities, we can speak the language, we know the stack, we know the problems and challenges that we've overcome with that particular product, so it's a win for us. But I want to talk about other people in the Silva community that have contributed. I don't want to make this a, just a Sousa Orange thing. So let's, can you talk about who, who yeah. else has contributed to the project? Yeah, for sure. So today, uh, what is important to keep in mind is that the, the, the project has been started by uh, the three telecom operators that I mentioned. So uh, Vodafone, Telecom Italia, Telefonica, Deutsche Telekom and Orange, plus Nokia and Ericsson okay. as a starter. Uh, so um, then, um, the, pro the project grew up very, very quickly. Something that has been amazing, we moved from blank ship to, to GA in, in 10 months. Wow. So honestly, it has been a very, very uh, hard work by everyone. And right now, we are about uh, 26 different partners. And uh, among the partners, we have uh, companies uh, about hardware, about bare metal, mm -hmm. about um, Kubernetes runtime companies, and we have also uh, integrators. And something that I truly love with the integrators is that we are having um, some companies that are using the, the Silva stack, for instance, to run uh, MPN, so mobile private network, 5G, private, yes. private 5G yes. network, uh, for their customer using the Silva stack. And, uh, and it was honestly uh, by, 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 by a, a, a total uh, a discovery when we were talking with those companies that what they are doing with the stuff we are implementing. So yes, it's a, a very versatile and homogeneous ecosystem. So today um, we have a different work stream where you are implied. Um, so we have, of course, the technical, we have the validation, we have the security, yes. we have the sustainability. It's super important uh, the sustain to have a, a, a work stream dedicated to sustainability by design was extremely uh, important. And uh, the last one, security, I don't know if I mentioned security, and the last yeah, one is about communication. I'll, I'll ask you about security in a moment. Yeah. Um, so, Michelle, I'm going to pick on you a little bit. <laughs> so, remember in our conversation how we uh, philosophically expect Kubernetes to be everywhere? You know, by, by building on that, I mean, I'm going to pivot that to a question to Philip here. What made Silva standardize on Kubernetes as the API to manage infrastructure? Um, was there like a survey done or is it just the new hot thing or you saw some level of traction and standardization? Oh, the, perhaps what's, what's different with what Silva uh, has achieved is that if we would have done something similar to uh, the Silva topic just only five years um, uh, before, it should have been something like a joint venture. Okay, because you have different partners, different companies working together, and you know what is JV. It's legal, 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 regu regulation and regulation. So after uh, spending six to eight months, perhaps you can start working. But we didn't want absolutely this way. We, we, what we did is that we, we bring doers mm -hmm. across the table and we share what we wanted to tackle. And, and for us, um, the, the full superpower from the cloud native ecosystem was very, very big echo to what we need to challenge every day. It's about the resiliency, the self and auto healing, the drift management and the closed loop reconciliation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, excellent. Um, so I'm gonna switch gears to security. So in my previous employer, um, as I was describing earlier about uh, security ATOs in the DOD and IC space, 
the government of France has something similar uh, promoted by ANSI, A-N-S-S-I. It's French acronym for basically the NSA kind of thing. All right. Um, but um, the thing about ANSI is that when a system has been designated as critical infrastructure, which means critical to the nation state or the economic health of a given country, then it comes under heavier government regulation and it has to be compliant. And so how are you, through Silva, addressing um, the French R226 authorization requirement that comes out of ANSI? Okay, so um, we've, we've not a, a, a too big deep dive on this. Uh, <laughs> what, what's really interesting in your question is when you consider the regulation uh, that we need to confirm to and uh, basically, the fact that uh, we are living in a European space, mm -hmm. honestly, the number of actors that are checking the box are not so numerous. Okay. Okay. Wow. So to say it in another, to say it in, another, in, in, a, in another way, when you want to address um, the European market uh, and in particular the one in France, that is today perhaps the most defensive regulation uh, based on the ANSI uh, uh, that you mentioned. Yes. Honestly, uh, it's extremely important to have a partner like you. And uh, for a company like Orange, uh, we wanted to do open source uh, since D0, but um, it was absolutely impossible to imagine reaching production without reinsurance. And with what's, what's very interesting mm -hmm. for us, and you mentioned ATIP. Uh, yes. And, and ATIP for us is extremely interesting because today it brings the reinsurance we need as an industry all to make open source uh, our uh, daily, I would say, uh, activities. So it's extremely important. Yes. So in my keynote tomorrow, there's a thread that says we do the hard things. Um, in this case, we've, we've, as the Edge business unit in our engineering team, we've aggregated components inside SUSE that help customers pre-check a lot of the boxes around security. So for example, even started at the Linux layer, things like SE Linux and NIST validated crypto modules um, and, and Kubernetes based STIGs, both for Kubernetes itself and STIGs for Rancher, secure technical implementation guides that are published by DISA and the NSA. We embrace those and we apply those to our software. So as an enterprise company that supports these highly regulated stacks or industries that, that these stacks will go into, we can provide an overlay of security configurations that just, like I said, go down the list, check the box where software is concerned. And it helps accelerate these guys getting into, into the field. Because it, let me tell you why it's important. You can build the best system in the world, but if you don't get that authorization checked, you can't deploy. If you can't deploy, you cannot monetize. Okay, so this is a gatekeeping process to making money for the telco operators. They have to get this authorization. And, and something that is extremely interesting, uh, but it's uh, right now only a, a bet, but we, I'm very curious to, to track on this. Uh, so AI is everywhere. If you, everyone uh, and you're very well this morning, the, the keynotes and we are a lot of uh, basically thinking that AI can bring anything for everyone. But what we are uh, observing is that perhaps uh, networks can do very interesting thing for mm. AI, and it's where the edge cases are popping. Do you have an idea of the latency that is required for having a live transcription by a chat GPT for O, for instance? We have, I'm talking in French, you have the, 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 the translation live and you answer to me in English and I have the live translation in, in, in French. Mm -hmm. What's the latency required? When you say required, you mean what to you have a fluent... A two it, yeah, it's, it's 230 milliseconds. Okay, right now, let's, let's assume another case. We have VR. Just turn your head. Do you have an idea of the, 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 the latency that is required? 10, 10 milliseconds. Do, do you think that we have the connectivity infrastructure here to answer to those needs? I, I, I guess no. So what we are very, very curious to understand, and, and, and I don't know if you have a look at the WWDC uh, presentation with the Apple intelligence and about the device yes. part. And what I've been said at the device part, they talk about private, private cloud computing and in-device AI inference system. So I'm very, very curious to observe what will happen because today um, uh, cloud is the king in a centralized model, but will AI have the power to change the, the equilibrium 
to, to, the, to the client side. And if we just only have a quick start of this change of equilibrium, I think that the need at the edge will just explode. And that's yeah, why... I, I agree with that. Yeah. And that's why the, the, the fact that I have rooted into the Silva project, the fact that, okay, yes, we are telco, so we are managing core and, and run. But to have edge cases, honestly, is something that is extremely critical. And we hope that the, the bet we made to, to put edge at the core also is uh, uh, a winning equation it, on the long it's term. It's going to win because um, philosophically, I agree um, that... So here's what's happening in, in our space at the tiny edge, the industrial space. We, our next wave is to basically figure out, we know how to do it, but expand how to get device connectivity, right? How do you get the pressure measurement from the wicker pressure sensor at the metal cutting factory? How do you take humidity from this thing or that thing, right? Because that is, on, think of it as a, an equation, right? So on the right-hand side of the equation, device connectivity is us touching the real world. It's where the real world meets the infrastructure. And so on the, in the middle is where we collect that data, we, we uh, historically store that data, um, we do real-time uh, an announcements and we host the application. That's gonna be a cloud-native application running at the edge. And then the left-hand side of that equation is the business value, the dashboarding, what do you see you know, what, what, is, what does a high pressure reading or low pressure reading on this device really mean to the business? It could be as simple as, okay, it's time for us to order a new canister, right? So that the plasma cutting machine has enough fuel. So um, the business value over here has to be interpreted, but that whole equation has to be in play, in place before it provides anything. And then so that's the baseline. And then now you can bring your machine learning models on top of that because that machine learning model is going to do nothing for you if you do not have that real world touch and connectivity, and it's not gonna do anything for you unless you can provide a historical data of what's happening so it can actually learn on real data. So our mission next year, for example, as the Edge BU, is to make sure that those baseline building blocks are in place um, and so we can add more value higher in the stack. So yes, with Silva, we have exciting stuff like this to manage, but we have also an, a, a real need to connect the dot uh, with the with the the real world the, the the real right now and what we're observing on the telco ecosystem is that basically the the CNFs or the cloud native network function transformation mm -hmm. is not happening at the speed that we could expect when we started our journey I would say four to five years back um, it's a huge transformation from ev every kind of actors so it means that um, the VNF that we would love to I would say uh, uh, separate because it's logical monolith mm -hmm. that are super complex to, to sure. manage in, in their lifetime. I'm, I'm afraid that um, we, we, we need to connect the dot with uh, the, our very super modern infrastructure that we are currently building, but to have a kind of bridge where we can future-proof the, the infrastructure for coming CNF, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that at the moment in time, we will need to onboard also uh, a, a bunch of VNF, and it's a part of the journey that we are having together with a Kubevirt integration yes, and yeah, support exactly. and so on. Uh, so just to summarize that, so even in cases where an older virtual machine-based application needs to come over into this world, we're still going to use Kubernetes to orchestrate the deployment of that VM using Kubevert. Um, let's open this up for questions, maybe? Sure. Okay. Um, anybody? Any crazy? Okay, we got one. <laughs> so... Uh, how do I word this question? So with Silva, obviously, it's an open source initiative to build essentially a can uh, stack to deploy containerized network functions on that you can verify against. And so you talked about there being loads of partners, hardware vendors, you know, you can, there's obviously, there are, there's a choice of Linux distros, whatever, you know, you can, so how do you manage the uh, application vendors charging a lot of money to verify on different stacks? How do you manage that and have, you know, without trying to push people towards, you know, a vendor locked in single stack? Because um, it seems like it could very quickly just go you know, you could have a million different combinations and... Uh, I love your question because it's exactly uh, the challenges that have our industry. How to uh, basically... What, what we need to understand, there is something that needs to be very uh, clearly understood, is where the network vendors ecosystem is making money, okay? So basically they are selling three things. Hardware, they're not earning something. Software, balance. So if it's not software, it's not hardware, where is it? professional services. And what we are sharing since 30 minutes right now is, on, is mainly about 
Automation, 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 automation. And automation is a killer professional services approach. So that's why we have so much, perhaps, reluctance. First, first part of the answer. The second one is, is, it's not an easy journey. Absolutely not. It's super tough. We are spending our weeks with uh, our partners to tell them how much it's incremental for us to rely on horizontal model, on Silva-like stack. Um, I, I, um, I'm, I'm nearly a newbie in, in teleco industry. Uh, I spent 27 years of my life in B2B industry and I want nearly two years in telco industry. If, I, if, I, if I'm wearing my, my previous hat, a, a, a partner who, who, who came in and, and asked to me, you know what, I want to deploy one infrastructure in your, in, in your data center to make running one services. Honestly, the guy didn't stay in the room more than 30 seconds. It's, it's, it's a no-brainer. But in the telecom industry, it's, it's not a problem for, for no one. So when we will understand that we have the sustainability, the power, the carbon, top, the, the carbon emission topic to manage, honestly, it, it may change. So I would say, and, and the reason why uh, today we have 26 different partners engaged in the Silva project, um, and it's okay, and something that is super important, it's you are born but it's not European bounded. So we have today um, uh, telecom operators uh, in APAC or in North America that are very, very engaged and, and, and working. And there's also some Middle Eastern uh, telcos as well that are interested in Silva. E e e exactly. So it means that it's uh, only the, the whole telco ecosystem that could change uh, part of uh, its industry. So I would say um, as far as we will have um, of telecom operators that are asking uh, to the to the editors the fact that they need to 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 be more open in the way they deploy their services and on on Silva stack infrastructure. I think we 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 could move forward. But you you're right. It's not an easy journey, and um, it won't manage. It won't be managed in a, in a finger snap, honestly. So Phil, I think we time wise we have two minutes left. Um, oh, okay. in, in one minute or less, <laughs> unless, unless there's a question from somebody else, uh, if there's not, I'm going to ask him about the future of Silva and specifically the future of Orange's uh, adaptation of Silva. Oh, today you, you have you have ninety seconds. Okay, no, 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 no. It will be very quick. So I, I bring a, a first part of the a first part of the answer. The uh, the first one was about the, the edge things uh, for inference computation. The second one definitely is on 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 radio side, because today we mainly explore the core part, and uh, we I think that we we have interesting things to do on the on the run. Okay, excellent. Okay, that, that I, you, you didn't expect that, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> great job. Thank you, sir. Thanks. All right. <laughs>